Venice is famous for its beautiful canals and, above all, for the fact that it is sinking. It does so at a rate of several millimeters per year. By the end of the 21st century, Venice will be half a meter underwater. Therefore, don't wait to visit this fantastic city. The city's most famous place on water is St. Mark's Square, which houses St. Mark's Basilica, the Clock Tower, the Bell Tower and the Doge Palace. You can also visit the oldest cafe here, although high prices are to be expected. The square is always crowded and morning hours are the best time to visit. St. Mark's Basilica looks magnificent from the outside and even more beautiful on the inside. The Doge Palace was the administrative center of the Venetian Republic for most of its history. There is a wonderful courtyard surrounding it where the staircase of giants dominates. It is very important to look closely at the surrounding facade and wall complex because on every section you will see unusual sculptures that are refined to perfection. St. Mark's Bell Tower is almost 100 meters high and is the symbol of this beautiful city. At the top, of course, there is an observation deck which can be accessed by an elevator. Everybody has certainly seen pictures of Venice and surely came across the famous Bridge of Sighs. It connects the palace with the prison wing. You can get a beautiful view of this attraction from the Ponte della Paglia Bridge. The bridge got its name from the stories of wanderers who, looking at this marvelous view, imagined how convicts made their last journey in such circumstances and, after being put in a cell, sigh looking at the magnificent panorama of the lagoon. While in the area, it is also worth walking along the waterfront. The Riva degli Schiavoni promenade stretches from the Doge Palace to the Arsenal Canal. You can admire the neighboring islands and relax while looking at the water. Walking along this path you will reach the garden which was created by Napoleon. Giardini della Biennale impress with its beautiful sculptures and pavilions. You don't have to take notes. We have included all the practical info in the description below the video. That's where you can also find links with accommodation, tickets to attractions and tips on how to pay abroad so as not to overpay on currency conversions. The bridge is located over the Grand Canal. You can cross it to the other side and it is also built up with various buildings. You can stop and enjoy the views in the central part. A shopping mall in the Fondico di Tedeschi Palace is right nearby and at the top there is an observation deck. The fact that the viewpoint can be accessed for free is a big plus. Note, however, that due to the high demand, you should book a visit in advance. Of course, in the meantime, you should visit the shopping mall where you can use the toilets free of charge. You can see the Arsenal and the Maritime Museum in the Castello district. The large complex is surrounded by walls. Until the 18th century, it was the largest shipbuilding complex in Europe that is why you may want to visit and see the area where exhibitions, sculptures and many other interesting attractions can be found. There is also the Maritime Museum nearby which will surely impress any enthusiast of the history of the Venetian fleet. The museum perfectly demonstrates why the Venetian Republic was a naval power. Venice is almost divided in half by the Canal Grande. Its length is almost 4 kilometers and as you walk along this canal you will see very interesting Gothic buildings, Baroque-style palaces and Renaissance complexes. The best way to see everything is during a water tour because in many places the buildings are too close to the water to walk freely. There are water taxis and gondolas cruising along the canal. During your tour it is certainly recommended to stop by the Museum of Natural History, which is located in a building built approximately in the year 1200. The Gothic Gold Palace, which has a gallery of Venetian masters, looks beautiful from the outside. Built in the 15th century, it has a courtyard inside and an asymmetrical facade that looks unique. Venice is famous for its gondolas and it would be hard to imagine a visit here without taking a cruise with a gondolier. Although the price is not very cheap, it is worth to consider buying a ticket and enjoy the city from a different perspective. The ticket price is lower during the day and a maximum of five people can board the gondola. Therefore, it is worth gathering a small group like this to lower the costs. 
Unfortunately, due to traffic jams on popular routes, there are occasional stops. The cost of the cruise is high because the gondolas that are put into service and licensed are made in the traditional method. There are only 400 gondolas in the entire city and the license is very expensive. The city is famous for its many churches and basilicas, and some of them are free to visit. The Basilica di Santa Maria della Salute is noteworthy, with its characteristic dome visible from the waterfront. In the Church of the Dominicans of San Giovanni e Paolo, you can see huge tombs and mausoleums. Santa Maria Gloriosa di Frari is a Franciscan complex that features works by Titian and a sculpture by Donatello. San Giacomo di Rialto, the oldest church in Venice, has a Gothic clock on its facade. Note that people are allowed into churches dressed appropriately for the occasion. Short skirts or shorts are not allowed. On Sundays, most of the churches hold services, and then visiting is not possible. The palace itself may not be as popular as the staircase that leads to it and the 28-meter high tower. It was built at the end of the 15th century and is a Gothic and Renaissance combination. It looks very interesting and it is worth seeing. The spiral staircase leads to the observation deck, which offers a beautiful view of Venice. The island of San Pietro is located in the eastern part of Castello and you can see magnificent Basilica di San Pietro di Castello from it. There are beautiful tombs and even more wonderful sculptures inside. The basilica has a leaning bell tower which is not immediately noticeable. Not many famous cities offer bookstore tours, but this one is worth seeing. First of all, instead of bookshelves inside, there are old gondolas where books are arranged on. In addition, there are also worn-out boats and old buckets. Damaged works of art are also given a second life here. The name Aqua Alta means high tide. Naturally, in Venice such situations happen very often, which is when wooden footbridges are laid out for residents to move along the streets. Those who would like to see Venice from a slightly different side should head to the west side of the Grand Canal. The Santa Croce district is home to many indigenous people and most of the streets are virtually empty on a daily basis. Once there, you can visit the Palazzo Mocenigo, which houses the city's museum. There are traditional Venetian clothing, furniture, and tableware inside. One section also displays a lot of perfume. There is also a beautiful garden, Giardino Papadopoli, nearby, where you can take a quiet break from the crowds. Due to the fact that the city lies on water, there are many islands in Venice which are also recommended to visit. One of them is Giudecca located opposite St. Mark Square. There is a Hilton Hotel and a bar on the island, which offers a panoramic view of Venice. There is a monastery on the island of St. George with a bell tower and an observation deck. Little Venice or Murano is a northern island that consists of several small islands connected by bridges. Through the center of Murano runs the Grand Canal of course. This place is famous for glass making, and the Cometa di Vetro glass sculpture can be found there. The island of Burano, on which colorful houses reminiscent of those found in southern Italy stand, is also beautiful. Torcello is the oldest island, where the Basilica of Santa Maria Assunta di Torcello can be admired. Inside you can see the remains of a mosaic that was created between the 9th and 13th centuries. Venice is also a city where you can enjoy relaxing on the beach. A perfect place for that is Lido. It separates the Venetian lagoon from the Adriatic Sea and is mainly famous for the film festival. In the historical part of Venice, it is not possible to drive cars therefore waking is the only option of moving around. It's worth bringing a map as there are a lot of narrow streets in the city and it is easy to get lost. If you are not in a hurry, that's not a problem. This form of sightseeing is sometimes better than visiting each attraction point by point constantly checking the time. The best way to see Venice is to take the water taxi. It's a good idea to buy a single or even a multi-day ticket as the price is lower than. Therefore, it is best to arrive in Venice by train, leave the station on foot and then take the water taxi. In Italy, restaurants charge a cover fee and in Venice this applies too. 
In some places a service charge which amounts to as much as 15% of the total bill is added. It is worth considering this before entering a restaurant or a cafe. The price of coffee in cafes is not too high, but with an additional service fee and cover charge you can sometimes pay several euros. Since it is a tourist city, it is possible to purchase all sorts of cards entitling to discounts. For example, the Chorus Pass entitles you to enter as many as 16 Venetian churches and the Museum Pass entitles you to enter 11 museums and the Doge Palace. Of course, you should be aware of pickpockets, as there are many. Note that near the most important monuments picnics are not allowed. Eating and drinking on the steps is forbidden, you can do so while walking or sitting at a restaurant. Quite interesting is the suitcase dragging ban. This is because of the great noise that was generated by crowds of tourists. Nowadays it is more of a dead rule, but it is useful to remember that moving around with a suitcase is very inconvenient. A backpack is a better option. It is also not allowed to ride a bicycle or scooter, and of course there is a ban on swimming in the canals. Those who would like to film or take pictures with a drone must get a special permit. It is also important to remember that feeding birds is forbidden. This is due to the large number of pigeons and seagulls that sometimes make quite a stir in the city. Visiting this beautiful city can take up a week if one wants to see all its glory. Of course, it is possible to see the most important sights in one day, but usually it is a very busy day and one should expect to be tired afterwards. Before coming to Venice, it is best to familiarize yourself with the topography of the city and verify which attractions are a must-see and which can be skipped. It is obvious that in tourist cities prices are high. That's also true for Venice although not all restaurant prices are scary. Simply go a little further and enter a small local place that serves typical dishes. Venetian bars serve snacks typical of the region. Sacchetti come in the form of small baguette slices, folded sandwiches or fried meatballs. These snacks can be found with either egg halves or pickled octopus. The price of such a treat is not high and starts at one and a half euros. They are available throughout the day and you can try new flavors. The king of Venetian bars is cod which is worth trying. Fried sardines in a marinade of onions, wine vinegar, nuts and raisins are also worth a mention. Also, do not forget the famous French macarons, or sweet pastries that originated in Venice. Not everyone knows this, yet it is worth trying this delicacy made famous by the French, which has its roots in this wonderful city. If you're already planning your trip, you can find accommodation and tickets to attractions on the spot in the links under the video description. You can also order a card for cheap payments abroad the same way. Press the bell and subscribe to our channel if you want to receive notifications about new episodes. Have a nice trip!